everywhere in the world especially in nigeria we are assailed by a myriad of information some go on to become unrivaled news gaining views all over the world and then they go viral when this happens and more than ever before everyone is talking about it it can become the topic of discourse and that's what we bring it to the center table here on weekend deal hence we're talking about influences and consequences why we ask you to interact is because we cannot be in all the rooms where discourse is going on we didn't hear the discussions we didn't see the people we cannot set real life examples because we are not part of the nigerian music industry but perhaps you are or you have first-hand knowledge of what's going on. That's why we invite you. Be a part of Weekend Deal today. My name is Thelma Obazi. And here goes the oh. amazing... Oh, God, Thelma, <laughs> Thelma. The influential Thelma calling me amazing. <laughs> Anyways, my name is Patience Eloi Abba. On this show, if it is important to you and if it is important to our nation, we will deal. Yes, that is why we are here every weekend to rub minds, to have conversation and speak to issues that affect us. And like Thelma rightly said, this weekend it's been about influences and consequences. We said yesterday that influence is very, very powerful. It has a capacity to shape one's future. And that is why collectively, we must shun negative influence and promote the positive ones. Today promises to be very exciting and educative as we have more guests join us on the show. And because of you, yes, you, thank you for always keeping a date with us. And please join the conversation. We will love to hear from you. And don't forget, we are here because of you it is time for us to begin our conversation proper and uh, francis as usual as usual has put together this wonderful piece that will be delving deeper into our topic let's watch so that our conversation can begin the extent of parenting depends on the quality of intimacy connection between parents and children if you have establish a wonderful bond with your children right from when they are growing up and uh, you are almost like you know not only father but that you are almost like their coach their mentor you know their friend their confidant the parenting can co continue till the parents die in old age you know because at one point or the other you need to recourse back to them and say dad mom i need your advice on this and then what do you think i should do and to, to guide you and put you through it is very, very easy for a parent that is present to be able to observe that from the air style, from the kind of clothing we have. You know, for example, <laughs> the first time my son entered into the boarding school, the, the trousers they gave them, the school gave them. By the time I came, the next visiting day, I saw that he has slimmed it to a almost, you know, very tiny pencil, something that, and he used needle to do it in the, himself. So, and that was the first point of, uh, you know, comment. I said, ah, what happened? This was not the trust we bought for you, so we began to talk about it. But a lot of parents see things and they just look away and they just feel that, look, they are small children, they will grow over it. But when you begin to see bad hairstyle, even using pen to, to tattoo, when they start using pen, they are just testing you to see whether you will comment. You don't comment, then they will go and do the real tattoo. Then they begin to put big chains on their neck and so on and so forth. And when they begin to use slangs that you know that this is not the coming of a child raising a good family. So these are always there and then you begin to you know to talk about it. The role of entertainment industry and the role of musicians is massive. In fact, 
it has literally taken over the role of parents for parents that are come see come sir neither here nor there if you listen to most of the songs that has that are released by nigerian musicians if you listen to the lyrics of most of them they are very satanic one day i went to a restaurant inside america again this this song was coming in yoruba so the people that are dancing that are listening to they don't even understand many of them don't understand but those who understand the the music is directing them behave like a mad person don't enter through gates skip the, the fence drink yourself to stupor and at times i ask myself a question where do where are the regulators if they are content that does not teach you about patriotism you know about nationalism about fear of god about love for your neighbors about caring for the elderly caring for people around you you know sharing what you have it's just vulgar language and you see today our young people are into drugs when we are growing up you go and look for role model you look for role model because they have they have lived a almost a spartan like like life you know our role model is based on you know integrity uprightness good character hard work and so on and so forth but today you don't look for role models role models are looking for you role models are jumping at you literally speaking you know uh, on <laughs> on tiktok on instagram on uh, you know facebook you won't even know that these are role models of your children until they begin to manifest you know the, the tendencies how can somebody be your your, your your influencer who do not have moral uprightness you know is a is not married he has four children with four women is this how our parents raised us before you make any choice think of the consequences first before you allow anybody to influence you look at their lives very well and then imagine what the consequences of the kind of attitude conduct character behavior that they are displaying imagine what those consequences will be our focus on weekend deal today will be on influences and consequences It's weekend day and it's always super fantastic to have you accompany us on journeys, interesting journeys that have an impact on nation building and development, just like this one. We're talking about influences and consequences in the Nigerian music industry. We welcome, we meet and greet. A man we know, he's the friend of the house, and he's going to lend his voice to our discourse today. Dr. Lomefo, he is a forensic and social psychologist. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me once more. Great to have yeah. you back on Weekend Dell. So, Thank you. Uh, the conversation is going to unravel in just a bit, but let's go to NTA Abuja. They've put something together, talking about uh, cartoons and um, books as negative influences on our children. Do you look at the cartoons that your children watch? Do you censor them? Do you provide checks and balances on the books that they read or what they discuss with their friends? Let's, uh, let's see what this package will unveil for us and then we'll start our discourse with our guest. In a world where children are constantly exposed to various influences, the impact of books and cartoons on their young minds cannot be underestimated. Many subtle but powerful influences have found their way into the books and cartoons that children consume. Should Nigerian parents be worried about these influences? The answer is yes. What we expose our children to matters. One thing that's really important to note is that children are like sponges. And so from the earliest ages, um, scientific research has shown that um, when mothers are pregnant, um, expecting babies, and they expose their children to maybe music or sounds, there is usually... Um, seem to be response on the part of the child still in the womb. There's no age at which you can say that, oh, it is too early for this child to be registering information, right? Even if it might not necessarily make sense. So, but in terms of now beginning to like read or when they're watching content, by the time they're as early as three years old, some are even smarter, so maybe even two years old, but whatever it is that they're exposed to visually and sound wise, they're going to be picking it up and it's going to be registering inside of their minds. I have seen cases where children who are exposed to um, 
violence, for example, in terms of like very violent cartoons, they begin to exhibit these tendencies because naturally children are curious. So when they see something, the next thing you know is they want to try it out. So whether it's a child standing on the couch and deciding they want to jump down because they want to try and be Spider-Man or Superman as the case may be, but then it's not as harmful now as when children are beginning to get exposed to um explicit content whether that's sexual or in terms of explicit language so when children are exposed to um any kind of content there's a high chance that they're going to copy it so when you're dealing with negative content and naturally you're going to begin to see that exhibited so how can parents be more alert it begins with awareness and engagement parents should look for warning signs are the themes in the programs and books content age appropriate are there sudden changes in your child's behavior? A lot of parents do not have the kind of relationship with their children that would encourage the child to be like, oh, mom, you said this, but then I read this. And so for a lot of the children, they are forced to figure these things out by themselves. And then naturally, they start turning to their peers. And the result of that is just chaos. It's really important for you to sit down with the child and have a conversation. So now you're going to need to sit that child down and say, okay, I noticed that you read this book and... Could you tell me what you learned from it? Then let the child tell you what it is. If you notice that some of the things that you have a problem with, the child has actually kind of caught that on, you're going to now need to start, um, you know, re reorienting your child, right? And you can't just tell the child, because I said so. That parenting might have worked maybe 50, 20, 100 years ago. But these days, children are extremely, extremely sharp. And so you're going to need to give them a convincing argument. Please don't fight with the child. Don't make it aggressive. Because what ends up happening is that we tend to rebel, right? Human nature. We rebel against um, correction or being told what we don't want to here it is best that you keep an eye on what they're watching you may not have that kind of time so maybe you would want to sit down and watch the show with your child one of these days better still you might want to eliminate the amount of television that your children are exposed to so maybe you want to get um, other activities that they can engage in because it's easier for you to keep an eye on the books as compared to tv parents can help ensure that books and cartoons are positive influences nurturing the creativity and values of the next generation. <laughs> yes, um, influences out there. In those days when you hear cartoon and children's books, what jumps into your head is innocence. But um, it's not exactly the case. Even if the situation in the cartoon is not the ones we are afraid of, you know what I mean, even the ideologies and the dogmas might not be what you want your children to imbibe. So it is very important that you watch along with them and change some things and say no we don't believe this we believe that it is very important our guest is still in the house he is a psychologist and a forensic expert he told me double honors <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lanzo. thank you thank you so, for hosting me yes i'm here yes welcome <laughs> we talk about influences yeah. and consequences what do you think about what our children our children right now are going through from the pop culture influence to social media how do you deal with it as a parent? I'm asking you this first as a parent, not yes. double on us. Um, Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are all in this together. Yes. And um, we can compare our growing up, you know, our uh, adolescence, our young adulthood, and now uh, full, um, fully into what you may call the uh, second half of life. Mm. Because mm -hmm. once you hit 50, you know, if, if it's a football match, it's a second day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. They understand second that. Second half. So mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think we've seen it all. Yes. And um, we are also in the business of a parenting. I have, um, have two children, one uh, boy, one girl. Um, the boy is much younger. Mm -hmm. He's just nine. And uh, the sister is um, 20 plus, 23 plus. That means you have uh, 40 whole years separating them. <laughs> Don't ask me. You know, I have watched them grow. It's such an exciting um, experience. Uh, experience, you know, uh, raising children. But far more challenging in uh, this time and uh, age. Um, not necessarily because of a, what you call generational gap. It's not really a matter of generational gap. 
is a matter of um, the age we are into mm -hmm. itself. You know, this is not, this is beyond the jet age. This is computer age. <laughs> You know, hmm. so we, we are talking about, that's what we're talking about, uh, you know, gener Generation Z, Gen mm. Z's. Gen Z's. Gen Z's. Gen Z's. Gen Z's. Gen Z's. <laughs> that, you, know, they have, you have to learn their language you, to communicate you with learn, your kids. You, know, yes. you, know, you need to learn their language. Yes. You know, the, what, sometimes when I discuss with my daughter and my son, you know, you'll be hearing you know, just strange <laughs> words. You know, she will say something like, uh, you are lit. You know, yeah. You, you are it means you know yeah, I, because I have to ask. Yes, you, know, you, you are you, high. You, you, you are you are on point. Yes. point. You yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is great. Yeah. And, do you understand? So it's a different kind of language. You need to learn it to be able to really exert enough influence on them. And um, it is coming from a, a fully globalized uh, world. Yes. Where, um, like a Marshall McLuhan, you know, a foremost uh, communication expert said that the world is not a global village. I think the world has shrunken further into, you know, into the palm. Yeah. It means that you can have uh, the whole world on your palm. True. With a little phone, oh, yeah. less than 10,000. You can work. You can connect to anywhere in the world. In the world. Data is fairly cheap. Yes. With 100 Naira, mm -hmm. you are out there. Yes. Now, you know, that brings me to what um, one, of your, one of your own, uh, the NTA family, one of your greats, then the Frank will say, yes. mm. he was asking that time, do you know the where you are? Yeah. Do you understand that? Mm. That question is still relevant today, perhaps more relevant. Do you know what your children are now watching, mm. you know, on their phones? You know, what do they listen to? Because it is no longer, during our time, to watch a film, you have to go to uh, the, the rent house shop, shop yes, right. or the and cinema. You know, the, you know, you go to the cinema. Mm. They don't need to do all this anymore. On their phone. They, uh, you know, MP3, mm. the, 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 <laughs> the, net, the, the, the internet the streaming lines, these things are free. Do you understand that? They are free. What that means is they don't even need to pay mm. to watch yeah, anything. Yeah, they need to pay much. Do you understand that? And they have access to mm. the uh, internet uh, hardware, the phone, okay. and stuff like that to be able to connect to what they want. Amazing. How do you control that? Indeed. That we ask you to hold that thought. How do you control that? How do you control that? That's the minimal area. That's the it's angle. That's, that's our focus. We will come to that. Talking about control, what the parents and guardians ought to do. Let's go to you. They're talking about role models, internet influencers, and influence of technology that's on it. our youths. Uyo, tell us more. A model should be someone who can influence an individual positively. My father is a police. I want to be a police like my father. I want to be like my mom. My mom is a doctor. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor like my auntie. For me, my role model would be Pastor E.I. Deboe of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Reason being that he is a God-fearing man. As the world continues to evolve and progress, the importance of role models cannot be overemphasized. Role models are crucial because they provide a sense of direction and purpose for the youths, inspiring them to dream big and believe in their potentials. Children now model after some of the celebrities and some of them, like the BB Niger that just ended. What lessons do our children learn from sitting and watching this program on our television? We don't have role models anymore. If we do have them, it's less than a handful. Somebody says it is about to deliver. The wife is going, uh, is going to deliver in about two, three months. And you see the, uh, the husband and the wife appearing on social media naked with a little thing to cover. What kind of message do you give to your own son, son and daughter in the house when you as a father, as a mother, appear naked in the name of show? Role models demonstrate the values of hard work, resilience, and perseverance. Examples of such role models in Nigeria are Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala, who stands as a beacon of excellence. She once served as Nigeria's finance minister and currently the director general of the World Trade Organization. Professor Akinwande Oluwole Soinka, a Nobel laureate in literature, has not only achieved literary greatness but also spoken for justice and human rights. In the world of sports, we have Kanun Wanko, the legendary footballer, who is also a philanthropist. 
He has inspired countless young people within and outside Nigeria. These are just a few examples of the numerous role models in Nigeria. Should our children and what be encouraged to have role models? Yes. Our children should be encouraged in the society to have role models. We still have good ones out there. And then too, parents then have their own duty to play by checking their children, following up their children, making sure that they don't follow the wrong influencers. Our National Orientation Agency has embarked on what we refer to as integrity uh, club formation in all secondary and primary schools because we believe we if we can arrest this young one at that level will be able to actually make them to be resourceful and useful in future in recent times the social media has revolutionized the way we connect and interact with one another it has also given rise to a new phenomenon called social media influencers Influencers are individuals who have amassed a large number of followers on social media platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. These platforms are designed to be addictive as many young people spend hours scrolling through their feeds, comparing themselves to others, and more often than not, feeling inadequate. Some Nigerians bear their minds on this. Should we go into the political sector? What are we looking at? People who do not have the qualification to stay in position of authority, but they are the ones deciding our fate in the community today. Yet you spend five to ten, seven years in the university, and then you come out, and then you look up to a politician, and you wish to become a politician because the person has made money. The good values are being preached to them in all secondary schools now. The idea is that we are trying to catch these young people at that level and be able to transform their psyche. By promoting media literacy and critical thinking, we can help young people in a healthy and productive way. The parents are the first teachers. They are the first sensitizers. They are the first people to teach their children the way to go on good morale in the society. It should not be left for teachers in secondary schools or, or schools or institutions still to stay. It should not be left for uh, preachers in the churches. It should not be left for government alone. The parent has a very functional duty to do in the lives of their own children, to transform them. The society at large can help identify positive role models and provide the support needed for our youths to follow their path. As role models are more than just individuals, they are catalysts for change and progress. So we're just having that conversation on um, what we should do as parents um, to keep our children grounded, no matter how rich and no matter how busy you are, you must be in their lives. Well, our guest is still here. Before we went to, to you, um, he was talking about control, what we can do to keep these children in check. So. Um, Dr. Menfo, yeah. you continue in that <coughs> I'm still here. Yes, you're here. Uh, see, uh, first, uh, I want us to uh, paint a picture. You know, first and foremost, let us understand that growing up yeah. is all about learning, mm. right? Mm. Um, th there are some, some psychologists that believe that um, we behave uh, the way we were born. Mm. It, but essentially, no matter how we look at it, the environment Influences. has at least 50% influence yes. on us, yes. depending on uh, how uh, the scenario is constructed. You know, um, admitting that uh, learning has an inevitable part to play in our lives, we now have to talk in terms of uh, how learning really takes place. Mm. You know, we have classical forms of learning, like what we call class, you know, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, then social learning. Social learning is the most important in what we are talking about here. You know, social learning has to do with observation, modeling, when you are looking at people. Yes. You know, the clip from Uyo was uh, uh, giving uh, examples of uh, Nigerians that uh, our children ought to look up to. Yes. Yes. That's observational learning. Mm. Looking at a uh, one course, or you can't, you know, they are iconic. Yes. You know, they, 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 they were able to make their lives a uh, sublime and have really emerged on global stage. In other words, if they, if they could get there, 
you too. You too can, can get there. there. Now, but what are you teaching them today? What, what are you modeling? Because the parents are the first role models. Yes. So, what are you modeling mm. for them? That's the fundamental question mm. here. Since we agree that modeling is a form of learning, mm. observation, observational learning is ongoing, even without you knowing it. You are looking at and you want to be like, mm. you know, because children, you know, children, adolescents, young adults are very impressionistic. They are yet to resolve the issue of identity. Mm. So they are constantly in search of answers to the question of who am I? Wow. Who am I? So the, it, that is where parenting comes in. Mm. What are you teaching them? What do you want them to believe is who they are? Mm. The, the behavior they copy out there. Mm. You are talking about the influences of Nigerian music. What do you consider to be Nigerian music today? Growing up, we were exposed to um, some Nigerian, you know, classics, you know, Sonia Ade, Sonia mm -hmm. you know, Ebenezer Obe, mm -hmm. uh, you, um, Victor Waifo, Waifo Sadebe, Sadebe, you know, Ali Chukum and all that, yeah. right? Now, uh, in, in not too long past, we saw um, a, um, a kind of uh, another generation of musicians, mm -hmm. you know, somebody like Two Face. You know, Idibia. Yeah. You know, look at that iconic, uh, iconic you know, like, man. You know, that, that iconic uh, number. You are my Afri African queen. Oh. Celebrating <laughs> the womanhood. Mm. Yes. It could be the mother. It could be the wife. Mm. It could be the, the sister. sister. Yeah. Do you understand that? You know, showing that the woman. You know, it's not just a sexual object. Mm. It's, it's, it, the woman is a the unique queen. gift. A unique gift to human to, 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 to humanhood. Okay. Do, you, do, you, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You know, there are musicians that are contemporaries to him. You find people like uh, P Square, Davido, Whiskey, and but now coming up to uh, present day reality, the kind of musicians you find, the content, what they sing. There was this one I was listening to. I think his name is uh, somebody Crown. His uh, stage name is uh, Shirley Poppy. You know, okay. you see him celebrating drugs, celebrating. In mm. fact, he listed. He's been a, he's been a arrested, released about two or three times by NDLEA or EFCC mm. over uh, you know cyber crimes. I don't know whether he's been convicted, but in one of his celebrated uh, uh, songs. Know, songs now, he is listing global you know uh, musical figures that were ex-convicts including himself okay wow do you understand that you know he listed them thinking about them and you go to the clubs that is what you you know that that's the rave now that's the rave so when you go to house parties go to life uh, you know uh, 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 clubs and stuff and these are the kind of music you are celebrating People are internalizing this. You are indirectly, you know, arguing that it is right to do drugs, it's right to do crime. One of the things we learned, you know, uh, in uh, journalism is never to glamorize evil. You don't right. glamorize evil. Because once you do that, you are justifying it. And you know, man by his very nature, you know, the way we are born, we are born hedonistic. Chasing, we are chasing clout, ch chasing pleasure. We want to be recognized. Beautiful, it's very beautiful to fight to be recognized, but you need to fight for it the right you way. Right way. Okay. No, 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 no. Let me ask you something now. Let me ask you something now because uh, Nigerians are watching locally, globally, yep. they are following your trend of thought and conversation, and many parents and guardians are watching. Yep. We know that in times past, um, we grew up being spanked, being corrected with the cane or with the hand. You know, nowadays, yeah. some of our children, whether verbally or with their attitude or character, they are not aligned to being touched or being corrected with the hand or with the cane. Yeah. Would you say sparing the word yeah. is, uh, is not uh, having the impact yeah. on the child Just in the way it ought to? Just last week, mm. I read something very disturbing. I read um, about a school teacher here in Abuja mm. that has been uh, dragged to court, being prosecuted for flogging a student. You know, that's what you are talking about here now. Mm. What does the system say? Do you understand that? You know, 
there is no way you can do away with punishment. You know why? When it comes to um, operant kind of learning, is the kind of learning that is based on reinforcement, you know, it, it, the exchange of a reward and punishment, mm -hmm. right? You oh, don't just true. reward alone. Mm -hmm. You need to punish, but you need to define the punishment properly in two ways. First, the punishment has to be commensurate, right? right? Commensurate uh, to the action you consider wrong, mm -hmm. because that kind of learning is based on the assumption that a behavior that is punished is likely not to reoccur. And a behavior that is rewarded is likely to reoccur mm. and get strengthened. Mm. It's a very simple hypothesis. Mm. And that is what child upbringing is essentially based on, reward and uh, punishment. So if you move it, uh, even in the family setting, up to school setting, there must be punishment. But the punishment has to be carefully defined to be in tune with the realities of the time. Mm. I, don't, I don't flog. My wife does, mm. right? I don't. I have my other ways you of, deal of yeah. dealing with it. Mm. You know, so I expect that parents should find creative ways We're around it. It wasn't the uh, unleashing your frustration on your children, you know, at every uh, given mm. opportunity, mm. you spank, mm. you kick, and all. Most times, this is misplaced aggression. Yes. Mm. So, you know, you you are transferring your 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 frustration. You you are you know frustration in life activities every day. You you are taking it out <laughs> on your children. You are insulted at work by your boss. You can't you talk about. You say sorry, man. Thank you, sir. Mm. You know, mm. but you get home to abuse. <laughs> Check the messages. Somebody is not commenting on that. So many parents will not agree. To abuse, to abuse, uh, abuse your wife. Your wife will get into the kitchen to, to kick the maid. You know, the maid will kick the cat. Yes. That is misplaced aggression. We need to confront in, in psychology. What we try to do is to get you to confront. Is to get you to confront reality. Yes. You must confront face reality. Yes. That is a reality principle. That is what we emphasize in trying to find answers to why we behave the way we do. You know, you you see, you can define punishment in such a way, uh, what we call aversion in a, in a learning psychology. Aversion is the a kind of punishment set in advance. That means you, the learner the trainee we have to learn to escape the punishment for example even i warn you that after after seven o'clock no more dinner it means that if you want to have dinner with the family you, must have you, have it to, seven. you have to come home before seven right i said have the punishment in advance but if you never said it and the boy returns home uh, after playing football or with friends to discover that the kitchen is already locked, mm. <laughs> that is not that is not punishment. Mm. That that becomes a cruel. Yeah, it's not. Punishment must be tailored towards learning, you know, so that the individual, the trainee, the child, will learn to escape it by behaving properly. properly. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in the family setting, that is what is expected of of parents, and in school setting, much the same. Because even uh, I haven't read the details of uh, why um, the, the teacher uh, was, taken to court. was taken to court. I'm really interested in that matter. Mm. I want to know the circumstances, what kind of punishment. For example, if you inflicted injury on uh, the student, you, you can see that he has gone beyond the punishment yes, to, no. to involve other things. Yes. A parent has a right to to yes, protest yes. when the when that punishment is not beginning to even even uh, if, if inflict physical and emotional uh, uh, wounds yes, injury the do you understand so it's a problem okay is it is a very delicate balancing okay uh, we have some messages doctor, coming in now this particular one jumped out to me it said um uh, doctor well done i'm following your conversation i have a son who is quite stubborn and have been beating him so much and now the beating has no effect oh, oh. on him good where do i go from here beautiful you know one of the, the uh clips we had there was talking about the conversation i think uh, uh, helen or somebody clinical psychologist mm. a professional colleague do you understand that very important don't think that your children are too young to learn or to engage you it's not true a child as you know as 
uh, young girls, two, three, yes. you're surprised. Yes. Do you understand These that? These days, no. You know, yeah. just, just engage them. Even mm. God Almighty, I was reading a place in the Bible, God himself said, come, let us resist. Let us resist together. Yeah, indeed. Do you understand that? Yeah, so indeed. why do you think you can't engage your children? Okay. Well, let's come to you the know? music industry, yeah. uh, Dr. Mefo. You know, it does seem as though many young people, because of the access to, like you said, with a small phone, you can access all what's happening in the glitz and glamorous world of entertainment, locally and internationally, from your home. So many young people have begun to role model their lives yeah. after these people. Good. Entertainers, you know, now we talk about the way they dress, yeah. the way they speak, mm -hmm. the way they adorn themselves, several chains, um, tattoos and all of that. Yeah. And it's happening live. Yeah. Sometimes, doesn't mean that the parents or guardians having done their homework they raised the child to a point and thought they had done well so what should be done now like between from kids who are already teenagers maybe yeah. from 14 to 19 they are watching all these people they feel they have money they are glamorous you know they have a great life and they want to be like them where should you, you we know, draw the line you know um until your child leaves home right training continues Right? It's a lifelong, even after leaving home, you're still an advisor, right? Keep paying, uh, you know, here you are careful. You don't want to appear to be controlling, running their lives. But you, you, you can always uh, share, you can always share your experience, advice, right? And uh, when they are with you, especially before they are 18, they are entirely your responsibility. You know, I talked about uh, punishment being carefully defined no parent should be afraid of punishment but it has to be properly defined you for example the way you handle your 10 year old mm. shouldn't be the way you handle an adolescent yes sir. you understand what yes. i'm saying there should be a bit of respect yes. he's now becoming a lady becoming a man. man you need to factor all these things yes. in you know the older they they grow the less the physical punishment they understand that you need mm. to really yes the less the physical punishment you need to engage you know in, in more conversations yeah you need to argue these things out you need to you know find mm. examples of the kind of life they are charting for themselves the examples of where the similar similar behaviors have left mm. left the people mm. you know, th these things Compare you, know, and conduct. Yeah, you need to you need to open their mind let them see that you are not you're not talking about you know when I, when I engage my my son it, it, I had a man uh, say that uh, he has a son he's not tired of you're beating, beating. <laughs> you know I don't beat yeah. my son is also very stubborn <laughs> very smart <laughs> very very manipulative <laughs> you yes. very manipulative he, he will find a way around it wow. and all that so you need to each child is unique mm. you need to understand them their psychology mm. You know, we are all, as parents, we are all small psychologists. Yeah, you, have have to play. Play. you have to. You have no choice. But know that the goal, you have a simple goal. The simple goal is to create an adult that will be useful to himself and ah. useful to the society. Yes. Hmm. Once you fail in this task, you have actually failed as a parent. Oh, yes. Do uh, adults, that? yes, doctor. You know, do you understand that? Yes. You have failed as a parent. Yes. But it's doable. Our parents did it. We should be able to do it. It is doable, Doctor. You know, Just hold that. Yeah. And it's a continuing process. It's a process. process. We must a process. continue yeah. to do our best. Well, let's take a break from here, but not just a break. There's a young man. I call him a young man. He's just 13 years old, doing great things in the world of art. And uh, Umar Sujura has packaged it and is bringing it to our delight. Let's watch. A big black hen. This this hen was a chick. The chick was an egg that hatched and produced a chick that grew up into an hen. It will also lay eggs, eggs that will hatch up into chicks, chicks that will later grow up into hens and cocks. This big black hen is one of the eggs of another big black hen. This big black hen will eventually lay other eggs that will hatch up into chicks that will go into hens and cocks. 
Kalega, a Roland, a creative and dynamic writer, began his writing journey as a little boy of eight in primary five when he could articulate his creative thoughts on paper with the encouragement of his mother and dad gave birth to his first book titled Lucy, the Mommy Spent. I'm currently 13 years old and I'm still writing. So, I just want to encourage other students like me out there that they should see the good things in them and try to bring it out. Today, young Roland at 13 years of age, who appears on assuming at first glance, has written numerous books such as Wish, Who Will Stand in the Gap, Confused Family, Broken Love, to mention a few. Young Roland says he draws his inspiration from happenings around him. I'm a writer. So I look at the things that I reason, I write them down in the book and wait for it to be published so that others can read it and learn something from it. Because the contents that come to my head that I write down are mostly educative and fun for learning. Okay. When I wake up in the morning, I arrange the place, the place where I take my night toys, that's my room, I arrange my room and make it neat, then go to my daily duties, that's my house chores. After that, if there's nothing else for me to do, I pick up my book and pen, then I start writing. And when I'm writing, I'm fully engrossed in it because it will just be as if I'm acting the movie in my head and everything will just be flowing in and I'll write it down. Kalega F. Roland is born to a civil servant father, Kalega Kojoto Paul, and a proprietress mother, Kalega Modupe Mari. He is the last child in a family of five that hails from Udu local government area of Delta State. He hopes and prays that the economy of the country improves and calls for philanthropic Nigerians to help keep his writing dream alive as the cost of publishing books has become too heavy for his parents to bear. I discovered this talent right from when he was more, more tender from his nursery one. He has been doing well. So because of that, I have to encourage him. Before now, I would say that it was good and smooth. But because of this uh, first subsidy of a team, when I produced or published the first book he wrote, Lucy the Mommy's Pet, I did it without a, with ills. I didn't feel anything. I didn't even feel it that I did anything. But now, the thing is shocking me. I cannot even do it again. According to him, he is aspiring to be the Wale Shoinka of his generation. Children, indeed, are the leaders of tomorrow. And it is the with Dr. Lo Mefor. You know, we went in depth into the role of parents, the role yeah. models we expose our children to. We talked about cartoons and all of that. And before the break, he was going to explore <laughs> that avenue. But we said, hold it first. Yeah. Dr. Law, shall you sing? <laughs> he says, <laughs> Felana. Oh, yeah, now. We like him. Fela, uh -huh. Fela, um, you know, growing up was uh, my best, mm. you know, uh, followed by uh, Bob Marley. Okay. And, um, you know, such stuff. You are deep. Uh, you know, yes, yeah, and uh, all that. And um, it, to be honest, the two uh, iconic uh, musicians turned me into an activist. Oh, you know, okay. Because um, they, they, they were uh, social critics. Yes. They were really uh, fighting for improvement of uh, a better society. Yes. And uh, Fela sang almost all his songs, uh, not only revolutionary, yes. you know, but they really try to get to the authorities. Mm. Um, I will not sing the one where he abused the government. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I feel that would be the right thing no, to let, do for you know, you know, that. Yes. Yeah, but, but like this, um, that this one I like all the time. It goes this way. Say, I don't be gentleman at all. Mm, no. Let's go. I be African man original. Mm. I don't be gentleman at all at all. Mm. That's right. I be African man original. Regina. Let's go to Benin, where the conversation is going to continue, talking about the impact that the entertainment industry has on uh, young people. Is it the young people, isn't it? Okay, let's go there. The role and the influence they have on our young ones. Benin
entertainment industry today is no doubt a very lucrative sector globally and Nigeria is not an exception. Over the years, the Nigerian music industry has involved in terms of sound, lyrical content and manner of delivery. From the likes of Fela Shawandi in the 1940s to I.K. Dario and Rex Lawson in the 1950s, Nigerian music continued to transform till the post-independence era with the emergence of artists like Fela Anikula Kokuti, Savito Waifo, Ebenezer Obe, Dan Mariah Joss, Sonny Okosun, Majak Fashek, to mention a few. What people were listening then was the message in the music. Musicians like, were like prophets. This crop of artists have some peculiar characteristics which include promoting Nigeria's diverse culture through their music and lending their voice to social consciousness, which is pivotal in shaping the society for good. While growing up, we have people like Fela, the Mandators, late Apostle Sonny Okosun, and so many others. If you listen to the kind of music they play, if you listen to the lyrics, you see that they were a form of wanting to create a change in the society. The majority of contemporary Nigerian musicians, however, are not in tune with the motive of their predecessors as they now make purely commercial music. But these days, we have more of maybe uh, businessmen in the entertainment industry than those that actually concerned about what is happening around us. But now, I think what people are much interested in right now is the beat and the sound, not really the, 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 the lyrics. In the old times, they could speak about the environment, the society, morality, trying to promote culture. But I think these days what they promote is more of uh, out of culture, I think, uh, more of immorality. My own view, I prefer the old musicians because they are more sensible. That the way they sing is more reasonable than the recent musicians now. Another major setback in the industry is the lack of proper organization and structure, resulting in quite a number of talent making wrong decisions about their management platforms. Government has to do one thing or the other. Look at talents who are ready to bring out this music, bring out this information we need in music, and see where to support them, not to struggle so much, but to come to limelight. The government should take some time out to listen to this music and go through the videos and see the ones that are, that are not even wise to be in the public because of the children. Children can be watching the videos today and they can see one or two stuff that they ought not to see. Like the popular saying, music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent. Our icons, I remember, send them the rays. How my you? Let's go there. Mama, man, the rain. Da, 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 papa, yo. Send them the rays. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember, influencers. Yeah, influencers. Yes. In the beginning, you, know, you, you, you can see um, what I said about separating the art from and the, the, art, from the artist. Oh, yeah. You know, how did we lose a magic to drugs? Hmm. Sad. These are facts. You know, so, you know, some people say um, you must uh, 
um, get into the groove proper uh, by uh, dosing yourself, perhaps overdosing yourself in, a, in a, a drugs and all that. It's not true. It's not every artist that is on drugs. Yeah. But the truth yeah, yeah. is that um, is the values that you tell your children, children. As much as we provide checks and balances, and society can you assist can when much. they will, oftentimes we cannot be there twenty-four seven. Mm. So it's those values we have armed them with that, that we have yeah. them to okay. take out. Here, but Dr. You, can, you, you may be able to control what you play. Mm. Okay. You know, national televisions control what they play, but how do you control that on the internet? All okay. those okay. things, and they okay. don't even they, they hardly listen to you know TVs. They go to okay. the internet. Okay. That's where the problem is. Okay. You know? And then uh, you understand that. That's why I am saying the census board should be able to you know put X on some of the things. Oh, so so even if they find it on the internet, okay. they will know that this music because is banned. of the training you have given them. Yeah. That, yeah. that this music is banned. Yes. And the the reason the music is banned should be out there. Out for there. To. We want so to thank you. So the becomes We want yeah. to thank you. You've been amazing. <laughs> we did hope for the second song, <laughs> but perhaps <laughs> when next we see because we we'll definitely go we will go have you again. Of no nation. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so we like your. You see, we want to sing some songs. Okay. But we don't I don't want I'll that sing, one. I'll sing you behind this thing. Good. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Lome, for, for coming on weekend. Thank you for hosting today. me. Thank Amazing. You. Forensic yeah. expert and social psychologist. It's been a pleasure yeah. having yeah. this engagement yeah. with you, yes. patient. Now, our next guest joining the conversation is a young woman who is not only interested in the music industry, but herself a musician. Please, let's make comfort in the cool. Comfort. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to our studios. Thank you. Okay, so you are an artist and you sing. What kind of music do you do? I do crossover. Okay, explain to me. What do you mean by crossover? Cross night crossover after January? No. <laughs> crossover is all kinds of music. I do music for the matured minds and, you know, I do native, okay. I do English, and I do gospel as well do you have a message do you send out mm. messages or do you teach lessons with your music yeah i send message of love oh mm. that is that is my priority yeah. i wish you unite yes. yeah love I, conquers all. I call myself okay. love ambassador wow <laughs> i love <laughs> you already <laughs> thank you with your lovely dimples okay so uh, comfort on this journey do you belong already to a record level if you're not how are you navigating your way through no, I've always been on my own. I've wow. never signed any record label. Okay. Yeah. Is okay. there a reason for that? Uh, I don't know. You know, we artists from this side, I'll call it the northern part. Mm. Northern extraction. Yeah. For now, it's not really easy. Okay. Then we try, we keep pushing. Yeah. Okay, well, what challenges picture. are you having? Okay. Can you share a few of your challenges? We have this one out there. You know, this conversation began yesterday. Mm -hmm. Some may be listening who wants to reach out and, uh, and support you to the level that you want to get to. The challenge right now here, I would say we have a lot of challenges, especially in the north, mm. northern part. You know, when you talk of uh, show business, mm. you have to strive by yourself mm. to, you know, like, sell yourself out mm. so people can... You Notice know? you. And the most challenge is that a lot of artists are on ground mm. that can even go for a peanut to mm. go and showcase their self. You know, you that you have worked over the years and you wouldn't want to like settle go for, for less. less. Yeah, settle mm. for less. And we don't get most of the um, artists, they, you know, invite them from outside mm. to Abuja. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you are going to get signed. Let's just imagine a scenario where you are not getting offers from labels to become a signee under them. Mm. What would you would you look out for? Would you be looking out for the kind of levels they are, no matter how rich or strong they are? Would you be looking out if I go here, I might have this issue, or would you just sign up with anyone at all that comes? <sighs> that is not possible. I can't just sign up for it. one. You just sign up and tie, you know, yeah. tie yourself yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. So you you know. Look. Because I have a lot of friends that have signed in and, you know, they are not finding it funny, okay. funny at all. Okay. Someone told us yesterday, one of our features, I think the background feature, that's an organary man okay. that Francis had a chat with. Mm. He said that when you're 
coming out, when you are emerging as, a, as an entertainer, it's good to have your team. Are you building a team? Do you have your manager? Do you mm. have your support a mom, system? A, a Perhaps that. your sister <laughs> can join in to build you, to give you confidence, so that when you now blow, that's the word we use, mm. you will be ready and they can speak and the, for yeah, you. You'll be a formidable people. team. Oh, <laughs> that's my girl. <laughs> You're right. I have, um, I have my manager right now and um, I have a team. I, I do events. Okay. Once in a while, I you know, organize shows okay. to encourage the upcoming and, oh, nice. you know. You're already giving know. back. Oh, nice. Okay. So, no, let, let's hear your voice. No, this thing, I'm now curious. <laughs> Comfort, you're going to sing for us. No, let's hear oh. her sing first. I want to hear her sing. See, producer, oh I want to hear Comfort sing. Okay. I'll just sing because um, what we are right now, we just need uh, love. Okay. We need peace, you know. Comfort, just pump me. it up, or raise the bar. I mean, let's see, say this. See your mother-in-law here. <laughs> raise the bar, then put yourself in this news and give it your all. Okay. You never know who's watching. Yes, sir. If only we can love ourselves, oh yeah, the world will be a better place. Mm. Oh. oh yeah, if only we can love ourselves, oh yeah. The world will be a better place. Mm. Oh yeah. If only we can love, the world will be a better place for us to live in peace and harmony. Mm. Oh, if only yeah. we can love. I am an ambassador. Ambassador for love. Mm -hmm. I am an ambassador. Ambassador for love. Yeah. Show some love. For the world to be happy, show some care for the world to be free. Mm. Show some care for the world to be free. Oh, yeah, to Lonye. Lonye, for my sugar. Let's go there. Yeah, to Lonye. Lonye, for my panto. Yes, so. I need so sweet, brothers are sweet. Great. Yeah, family is sweet. Yeah, oh, amazing. Let me see that word, Ikpanto. Now, I don't even know how to describe that word. Uh, we must check Ikpanto. Oh, amazing. Right over there, right? But the bottom line, you, we are all Nigerians yes, and we and must we come more. together come because together. we have a bond. Mm. We, we must unite, brand, celebrate yeah. each other, and yeah. love and respect each other. Yeah. Fantastic coming Thank out, you. comfort. Comfort Thank to you. the world. Yes. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. I love your voice. Great mm. rendition. Parents and guardians have an enormous responsibility. Keep raising your children. It's never over. Never Dr. Mephosa over. is a continuous process. Yeah. Raise your children. Guide them. Shepherd them. Know what they're doing at every given time. Like yes. Franco Lisa used to say, do you know, know where, where your, your children, children are? are? And I'll just add to that. Hmm. Do you know what they are reading? Do you know? Do you know what they are watching? Do you know what they are reading? I remember when my son came to what me one day doing? and said to me, Mommy, if I need something, I have to, do I have to wish upon a star? I was first shocked. Tell me, do you know where that was coming hmm. from? There's this Disney show that says, if you wish upon that star, everything we come to you and mm. he asked me at that time small age and i wow. said no first How we old pray was to he? god he was about five six wow. and he said no you don't wish upon a star you pray you to pray. god and then you walk hard. hard so you see you need to see even when it's not about the things like i said we are afraid of we mm. must correct them and tell them the right way to go you don't wish upon a star, you pray and work very hard. Yeah. Parenting That's how we say it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Together. <sighs> God bless Nigeria mm -hmm. and all the exceptional parents who are raising really exceptional hard. children. We love you. Bye-bye.